Hello students, I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel and today the topic or the chapter which we are going to start with the uh, is demographic attributes. Okay, so without wasting our time, let's move on with the chapter. Demographic attributes. So students here, if you see two different terms has been used, demography and attributes. So demography means population and attributes mean its characteristics so in a very simple term if we say then the characteristics of the population composition is termed as or can be termed as demographic attributes okay whenever we say the term population the first thing which comes to our mind is the number of people and in number of people we differently we have two different genders that is male and female isn't it? now those male and female will be of different age groups like children and the working class and the seniors senior citizens isn't it? so in that way different age groups are will also be there in the population and their place of residence in which place they are living whether it is a rural area or the urban areas the economic activities they are indulged with okay whether it is a primary or secondary or tertiary activities and some of the age groups will be uneconomical also okay cannot perform any economic activities okay like the dependent population okay so these are the different composition or the characteristics of the population and in this chapter we are going to discuss about those characteristics okay so let us first begin with the ruler and urban so like all the population all the population of the world okay of other countries our population is also been categorized into two according to the place of their residence that is your ruler population and urban population ruler population and urban population okay now the people who are living in the village is termed as ruler population and the people who lives in the towns and cities will be considered as urban population very simple isn't it now the population the ruler and urban population their way of life their standard of living their occupational structures their attitudes will completely differ from each other in rural areas if we see the people live in a very close and deep social relations we don't find such things in the urban living isn't it so the occupation structure also if you see the people who are living in the rural areas will be involved in the primary activities uh, like agriculture fishing isn't it but whereas in the uh, towns and the cities the occupation will be basically secondary or tertiary like industries trade business isn't it uh, your uh, transport different services okay so in that way the occupational structures also differs from place to places now the thing is that India, our country is primarily, you know, consists of number of ruler people. It is also known as the country of villages because the number of ruler population uh, like is more compared to the uh, urban population. So according to the census of 2011, 68.84% uh, of the population was living in the rural area that uh, accounts for 833.1 million people and 31.16 percent of people were living in the urban areas which nearly accounts for 377.1 million people okay but if you see the size of the rural population is also huge isn't it now if you compare the population of america usa which is the third most populated country in the world okay it does not even outnumber our urban population okay urban population is more only our urban population is more than the total population of usa okay students but the distribution of the urban and the rural population again it's not equal in our country it varies from state to state so that we will understand with the help of this table so students this table provides us with the comparison of the ruler and urban population in their census of 2001 and 2011 and it will it also shows us the regional disparities among the ruler and urban population okay uh, in the year or in the census of 2001 if you see the total ruler population in our country was 72.19 percent and urban was 27.81 percent and if you see in the census of 2011 there is a slight changes in the ruler and urban population urban population is more 
compared to the 2001 census now it must be the reason behind it must be the migration which has been taken place over the decade okay because of the uh, you know the work and the employment facilities okay pe generally people they migrate from the rural areas to the urban areas which has led to the growth of urban population and uh, you can see the states also state wise also if you see himachal pradesh has recorded the highest ruler population in both the census that is 2001 and 11 also if you see 89.96 percent of ruler people are present in himachal pradesh in the census of 2011 and uh, goa has recorded the lowest ruler population among all the states Similarly, even we find the differences in the rural and urban population among the union territories also. So again, when we are talking about the rural and the urban population, the most uh, important topic which come across is the urbanization. Now, urbanization means the definition, we can define the urbanization as the transformation of a rural population to the urban population. It's the process of transformation. In a very simple term, if we say uh, from a village, it is changing into the towns and cities. That is called urbanization. Okay. Now, again, the thing is that the regional variation as just now, which we have seen the distribution of urban and the rural population. Okay. So, we have regional variation in the urbanization also. It not like you know it's not same uh, all over the country like for example uh, i have taken out the highest urbanized state that is goa which is 62.17 uh, percent of people are living in the urban areas whereas himachal pradesh only 10.4 percent of people lives in the urban areas okay so in this way like the state wise also if you see it varies in the rural and urban population as well as union territories also varies from um, like urbanization okay now the next topic which we are going to discuss is the sex composition sex composition means the male and female the numbers of male and female present in a particular area now the sex ratio it is also called the sex ratio now sex ratio can be defined as the number of females per thousand males okay number of females per thousand males so it is counted in that way so if their females exceeds thousand males number of females if it exceeds thousand male we call it as excess of female now if it is lower than the thousand males the number of female if it is lower than the thousand males we call it as deficient of female and unfortunately our country the sex ratio of our country if you see then we have a deficient of female that is 940 is 2000 means only 940 girls are there per thousand males okay now if we see the census of our uh, previous census also we have uh, seen a considerable growth in the number of female also like in 1991 it was just uh, 927 which uh, increased to 933 in 2001 and in uh, 2011 it has increased to 940 okay it has rose to 940 so over the decades the number of female has been uh, increasing okay so that's a very good sign uh, we can say that our country is progressing isn't it uh, so that was the sex ratio introduction to the sex ratio now the thing is that why the sex ratio is so less in our country the main reasons okay the main reasons why it is so so the reason behind that is male child is preferred okay like according to the tradition of our country okay the male child receives much more preferential treatment than the female child okay female childs are generally neglected isn't it and uh, another thing is increase in the dowry debts now this is a very heinous crime okay it has been uh, considered illegal and it has been banned also but still every day we have to hear the news of dowry debts which is also increasing the number of uh, sorry increasing decreasing the number of female now human dies at the time of giving birth now many women die at the time of giving birth to the child so risk is to the married humans remains high throughout their reproductive age now if the first child is male they don't go for the second child now the craze of the male child can be reflected in the increasing number 
okay increasing number because if the first child is male then most of the couples they don't go for the second child also next is the female forticides okay now this is also one of the serious crime now the craze for the you know the increasing number of sex determination tests and the abortions which are carried out in the recent past of the child is female has also decreased the number of uh, females in our country okay still we have to hear some kind of so like you know uh, th this kinds of news every day okay, that is the reason our country is still is an underdeveloped country because the people are literate over here but not educated now those are the sociological factors with uh, for the low sex ratio in our country apart from that migration also plays a very important role in the uh, low sex ratio of our country okay like the, for example males like out to migrate from the uh, states again okay, search of jobs to the other states so leaving their families back home okay so they it results in the number of females more in the uh, origin area okay and uh, also the human laborers also migrate to the different uh, industrial and mining centers of our country so this also uh, you know affects both the origin as well as the destination area okay so that is also the reason migration is also one of the reason for the low sex ratio all those factors which we have discussed those these are the sociological factors okay so students uh, will end our class over here or the video over here for today thank you for watching and i uh, hope this was quite helpful in case if you find if it is helpful then please like the video share the video and please subscribe my channel thank you for watching